Can everyone see the screen? All right. All right, good. Oh, we need to get these two books from one of my students, uh, my moon OTAP, Chavez L. Bay. He's Washita. We need to have these books in your collection. From where I did with the first water, he went further as far as with the information is concerning how America is the true old world. Mu discovered the promised land. And these are just two of the four editions in which that he will put out. Um, as you see here on the covers, uh, this is showing you India Superior as well as who are the Moors, as well as ancient Egyptian. This is the Shiva temple, Isis temple, and the Cheops pyramid. All right. We know that there have been hieroglyphics found here among the so-called Native American tribes, in particular the Micmac or Nicknack, hence the Hence the, I guess you can say, uh, the song from when we was a kid, Nick Knack, Patty Whack, Give a Dog a Bone, uh, that was a diss to the Nick Knack or Micmac tribe, Native Americans, indigenous Aboriginal people, um, in which that had hieroglyphics or the Metro Nature as their writing. Um, what we'll find out is that ancient Egypt was here. And this is not the West. This is actually the East, and which that I've taught about several times before in class. Um, this is the old world and not the new world, as we've been told. They have reversed um, this information. They have reversed magnetic or the magnets or in particular compasses they have reverse history uh, we call it twistery or technology or reverse psychology I have a term whatever term in which that you want to utilize this is what has been done in order to take us from um, from not understanding what was really going on so, we know that according to historians, the Olmec civilization is the mother culture of the Mesoamerica. Now, they have done the research, the studies, paleontology, archaeology, anthropology, um, genetics, biology, etc., etc., on the Omex and they've stated that these are Africans and really what they mean by Africans is not necessarily that they came from Africa they just simply saying that they have so-called dark skin phenotypes thick nose broad lips all right. So a mother culture is a way of life that strongly influences later cultures. So if the Olmec culture is the oldest civilization in the Mesoamerica, in which that dates further back to 5,000 years, as we know, because based on Albert Goodyear Jr.'s uh, professor, uh, uh, Dr. Goodyear, he stated specifically that at least 51,700 years ago there was a so-called African culture that was here and that could have been none other than the Olmec Empire which is the Washita Empire which is the Ultima Empire which is the Moorish Empire all these empires in which that they are stating are actually one and the same as we have stated over and over again so the Olmec Empire led to the development of the other civilizations such as the Maya and the Aztecs. So when you hear about Mayan, 
as we have showed you the Mayan in which that when we went down to uh, two years ago to Mexico, the Mayan told us specifically, actually it was uh, more than two years ago, this here was actually, um, I, I've had this footage since 20, I think we had this footage ever since 2013, all right, um, March of 2013, in which that he said, have y'all heard that the Mayans did not build the pyramids? It was the Olmecs, the Olmec civilization. And he said that they are the Nubian Egyptians. That's what he referred to the Olmecs as. But he didn't, he didn't tell us that these Nubian Egyptians actually are the Atlanteans. Prior to that, the Lemurians. Prior to that, the Hyperboreans. Prior to that, the Pangeans. These are all names in which that we've been told. All right? That we've been told. Historically. Not telling us that these are the same people. So this is why when we go back and look at this photo here, it specifically states the Isis Temple, the Cheops Pyramid, the Shiva Temple, and these are specifically um, areas in the Grand Canyon in which that demonstrates that the ancient Egyptians were already here. And these are bef and this is before the building of the pyramids in the Giza Plateau. Alright? This is before. So, when they speak about the dynastic, the ancient dynastic gods, so deities, of course, Manithos was asked by the Greek well, who existed before uh, this present um, dynastic period? And Manitho said a bunch of gods. Not explaining that these gods came from what they refer to as the far west, which is actually the true east. We showed you before that the map is upside down. And what we refer to as North America actually would be East. And what we refer to as Asia, Africa, would actually be East. I mean, excuse me, would be West. So it's been purposely flipped. Not to allow us to understand that we, as the Washington already stated, the Empress have already stated, we've been recognized that the United Nations is such as the oldest indigenous people on the face of the planet Earth. This is the reason why, because the oldest people on planet Earth actually came from the Americas. Right here, the Maya Indians civilized the Egyptians. Now, who are the Maya Indians? The Maya Indians are the descendants of the Olmecs, as we have already shown. This is a link to the Kansas City Journal article entitled Prehistoric Man. All right. October the 12th, 1886. This article was written by Edwin Walters. You can look this up. This article proves that the oldest civilization was in the Yucatan and in Central America and that Egypt was first people by immigrants from the Yucatan. This article gives six facts to support it. Um, everybody, please mute your background. I'm hearing feedback. All right, so right here, Egypt was first people by immigrants from the Yucatan. But you would think that it was the Mayan Indians in the way in which that they look now. These are not the Mayan Indians. These were of course, the Omex. All right, it was the Omex. And the Omex went into Egypt, drugged the Nile, made it just as long, a little bit longer actually than the Mississippi 
river, which they also drudged. And then they went further into what we now refer to as India, into Sumer, Mesopotamia, into other parts of Asia, and what we now refer to as China, Japan, and then back around again into the Americas, the Pacifics, back into the Americas. They was charting how large the world was. Peace. Peace. Yeah, I say what's peace. They was charting how large the world was. It was the Omex, the Egyptian Nubians, as they are referred to. Within the Holy Quran, Circle 7, Chapter 47, it states they are called the Kushites of Old Man Kush. So we know that the Kushites dwelt all over the planet Earth at one time. They tried to relegate it down to just Africa, and from out of the interior of Africa came forth everyone. All right? Which I have not, I will say this, that I have not found any relics in which that is older than 2.8 billion years old in which that comes from out of South Africa. But there has been the Atlanteans, the Lemurians, the Egyptians, all that was right here. And we left from here, went into what is now Africa, into what is now Egypt, and we asked our brethren, the Ethiopians, in which that we was affiliated with, in order to have a portion of land. And this is told to us in chapter 47 of the Holy Quran, Circle 7. Do anyone have the Holy Quran, Circle 7? And can you read chapter 47 for me? And it tells you that we requested from our brethren to basically uh, as Egypt became the dominion. But they didn't explain to us that there was several Egypts. The first and oldest Egypt was here in the Americas. Then the kingdom, the Egyptian kingdom, this was the Egyptian empire here. The Egyptian kingdom was the one what we now refer to as Egypt and Africa. That was the kingdoms. This is why they all refer to them as the kingdoms. You had upper kingdom, the lower kingdom of Egypt. Upper Egypt, lower Egypt. But this here in the Americas was the Egyptian empire, known as the Amadu Empire, which is the Moorish Empire, which is the Washington Empire, so forth and so on. Same empire. And who dwelt within the Yucatan? Well, we know for sure that it was the Omex that dwelt in the Yucatan Peninsula area. They dwelt in Leventa, San Lorenzo, Tabasco. Their descendants now live in Guerrero, Mexico. Where there's a, over a million of them still living to this day. My wife and I went to uh, Mexico, our first time going to Mexico. This was back in 2007. What we found, um, we, we, we was going around asking people where the Omex. We went to the mall. There they were. It was a son and a father and son. And he said, we're Omeka. I said, good. And we took a picture of him and everything. And um, they was dark skin, broad nose, thick lips. And they was walking down the street in America. You would say that they was Negro. You wouldn't know any different. So it was fantastic for us to find that there were Omex, people who knew who they were. 
in Mexico. Because soon we as soon as we asked them, look, we was looking for the Omecas, descendants of Omecas. He said, I'm Omeca. That's what the father said. Beautiful thing. So this is the reason why being that we know that the ancient Egyptian mystery school system, as it is called, is what developed Islam, Christianity, Judaism, the so-called monotheistic belief system, and which that later goes into what we now know as Egypt, into Israel, Jerusalem, Canaan, Phoenicia, into Assyria, all the way into Mesopotamia, Iraq and Iran. We know that these monotheistic belief systems actually is derived from here, from the Americas. And how we know this is because of a book by Charles Vail. I think it was called The Mystics of Freemasonry by Charles Vail, V A I L. And he specifically states in it that Freemasonry does not owe its origin to Egypt, but to the Americas. And that's deep. We know that the same prayer positions and which that is within what we now call the sun salutation of yoga in India or what we refer to now also in Egypt as the Egyptian or Kemetic yoga have the exact same positions within Islam, prayer positions of what is called Salat. The same prayer positions, Takbir. Kiem, Ruku, Jalsa, Sidon, Saja, with the head to the face, to the ground, which is prostration. These seven positions are found in the twelve positions of the sun salutation in yoga within Egyptian comedic yoga So this is some of 565 names, 484 in the Americas and 81 in Canada of villages, towns, cities, mountains, lakes, rivers, etc., etc., or etymologically Arabic. As we have told you before, Arabic, Hebrew, or 62 to 68% identical to the Metunature, which is the hieroglyphics designated by locals long before the arrival of Columbus. Many of these names are in fact the same as the names of the Islamic places. Mecca in India, uh, Indiana, excuse me, Medina in Iowa, Iowa, Medina in New York, Medina and Hassan in North Dakota, Medina in Ohio, Medina in Tennessee, Medina in Texas, Medina and Alva in Ontario, Muhammad in Illinois, and Mona in Utah or just a few noticeable names at the outset. A closer analysis of the names of native tribes will immediately reveal their Arabic etymological, uh, etymological um, ancestry. Askenazi, Apache, Arawak, Arakana, Kaven, Cherokee, Cree, which is actually a Selegi, all right, which is Ananuia, 
Hohokam, Hoopa, Hopi, Mecca. Well, if you can't tell by Mecca, then something's wrong. Mohican, Mohawk, Nazca, Zulu. If you can't tell by Zulu, then something's wrong. Because how is this Zulu, South Africa, and Zulu, Native American? And Zuni are only a few. Islam is America. is everywhere. One just has to look for it. From Khalif Harania, which is California, to Alabama, Alabama, to Tallahassee, to Medina, Ohio, to Morristown, New Jersey, to Islam Oranda, Florida, to Alhambra, California, Muslims and Muslims have left an impact on this country. And this is in rupinews.com. You can look this up. All right, so we know that according to the real Indians is the Negro, a.k.a. the Black Amours by Dr. Ali Muhammad Bey. He states the language of the Indians, a.k.a. Negroes, equals Algonquin and Arabic. It's essentially the same language which goes back to metronature, hieroglyphics. And he's right. Same language. Goes back to the metronature, hieroglyphics. Now, who spoke metronature? The Egyptians, the Kemites. The Temerians. So this is how you get this book called the Book of Mormons. Another testimony of Jesus Christ. Metal plates and books of um, Mormons replica. Crandall Printing Museum. Provo, Utah. So when you speak about the Mormons, you have to look at the etymological roots of Mormon and Moroni. It says the Book of Mormons covers the historical period of 800 B.C. to 421 A.D. Moroni, the Negro angel, Moroni is the Negro angel, revealed to Joseph Smith in 1823 the existence of golden tablets which were written, the sacred or uh, secular account which the book is based Four years later, in 1827, Joseph Smith received the place and translated the African writings inscribed upon them. After publication of the Book of Mormons in 1830, the black son of, Mon of Mormons, Moroni, took the place away. Upon what basis does this writer establish the African identity of Mormon, of Moroni? Why is African used to describe Writings contained on the plates read on. Well, once again, they keep doing a disservice of just going back to Africa, which there's nothing wrong with the word Africa. However, um, we know that that is a later name or is that they transcribed upon the continent Akibalan, which we now refer to as Africa. Allegedly, Akibalan is an older name than Africa. However, the ancient Egyptians being that they came from here and went into what we now refer to as Egypt, Kemet, uh, we find that there, um, the word af, or afu, ra, and ka. Afu or af means body, temple, house. Ra, of course, means sun, light. And ka means spirit, breath. So, afu, ra, ka, simply means the body that houses the light and breath, which is the spirit and soul. The body that houses the spiritual soul. So afu raka simply means the body that houses the spiritual soul. We all house the spiritual soul in this body. So therefore, we all are Africans. And they tell you this, but they don't say that there's African Europeans. They don't say that there's African Asians. They just say there's African Americans. And half of us looking elsewhere. This has always been the problem. So upon what basis does the writer establish the African identity of Mormons, of Moroni? So let's look. 
the Moors had. And looking at some of the major languages of the world, the selection Mormons and Moroni are found to be merely variances of the root more or more. This is born out of the many copies of family coats of arms, Rogers, J. Rogers, Nature's No No Color Line, 1953, I mean 1952, page 69 through 107. Another source validating Rogers' claim, Fox Davis, um, author Charles, 1904, Franklin Julian and John Tanner, 1969, Brooke Little, J.P., 1973, Gosh Henry, 1960, 19, I think that's 67, and Herbert Alcock, 1962. The sources um, sites above speaks with one voice regarding the art of heraldry, science of armory, of coats and arms. The only people who needed arms were the gentry. They were those who were worth recognizing in battle or who were invited to tournaments and who needed a seal arms, therefore was tools of the nobility. They were a certain of descendancy. In short, they proudly display one family history. A common figure in heretic art is the Moor's head, depicted as black, woolly head, broad nose, and thick lips. In contemporary jargon, this translates into Negro's head or black family crest, meaning, of course, that the surnames associated with the shoes, along with the figures, established the Negroness of the family. Black families of nobility then existed within many major nationalities. Mormons is simply one of these family surnames which prove beyond a doubt that Mormons refers to black family roots. Mac Ritchie, this is David Mac Ritchie, they say that families with the name Moore, Moore, Morris, Morrison, and other deriv derivatives of Moore had Moors as their ancestors. Throughout antiquity and um, as late as 1900, Moors were synonymous with Negro. Black Moors is translated as black as a Moor. Blacks, Africans, brought into England, and they was not born into England, the original um, so-called blacks, Africans of England, actually were the Twa people who was in Ireland, Scotland, and England. And this is why they say St. Patrick ran the snakes from out of Ireland. The snakes or the Nagas is talking about the Twa people. So they was already in Europe as they were already around the world. Baptized into the church and given the surname Moore or Moore, Moore, Moye, Moro, Murray, Black or Moore. The Roman Morris occurs in the European language as Moore, Moore, Mar, Morian, or Maureen. In this writer's opinion, Moroni, Mormon's son, is simply a variation of these examples. The English Morrison means son of the moor. On page 83 of Nature's No No Color Line, moor man appears on the French coat of arms occupied by the black woolly hair, thick lip, life form. Another such depiction which closely resembles Mormon and Moroni is Morini. Page 84. It must be understood by the reader that moor in antiquity through the 1800 refers to a race as well as religion. The only time the word was used in reference to religion was to show contrast, Moors versus Christians. The Moors versus Christian. Esther and Van Nicko, the black, Negro, Moor. All right. In further support of the foregoing African Moors, that is unmixed Negroes, ruled Spain for 200 years, as we know, Actually, it was longer than that, but it's from 1285 to 1485 A.D. We you know that really further, African Moors first entered Spain in 711 A.D., and actually they was already in Spain way before then. So you talk about Yes. Uh, we're not seeing this screen without information. But the last information we see is 
มอมอนนองอ่าพอมดีแมรีแอนเวบสเตอร์เอ้ก็ you see it now yeah all right all right thanks all right so these were indigenous or pure Africans it wasn't until 12 years later 723 that Asian Moors entered what then was referred to as Iberia Mormons then is to be translated the same as would be more men equals black or Negro man or as Morrison equals son of the Moor or Negro. The only difference being one vowel, A, O. Owing to the common era of time, this writer submits that Mo Mormon or Moor man most likely originated as Mormon or Moor man. Moroni quite conceivably is mere extraction of Moro. Now, if you go to the Philippines and sit with the Filipino, They would not actually refer to themselves as Filipino. They refer to themselves as Moro, M O R O, black, with the ending "ni" serving no etymological purpose, but perhaps to embellish the root "more." Other roots: the term Moroni and Moro, or excuse me, Mormon, father of Moroni, or descendant of Nephi, a Nephi, or closely related to the variants of "more," "more." More, or Morris, uh, or Maurice, etc. As can be seen by the following examples: Note the root more. Spanish Moro, Negro hey Negro Black or more. Mora equals Negroes, or as they say within Spanish, um, um, Moroni, um, as it is called by um, within Spanish. Um, they refer to us because I asked a, a Mexican um, brother. Uh, he was a Mason. I said, "Well, what do y'all refer to us here in America, in North America, as, or in, you know, I should say, in the United States, um, as, as they refer to it as?" Um, he says, um, "He told me Moreno, Moreno, and the woman is Morena." Okay. Not not black, not Negro, because these actually were terms in which that related to objects. Italian, black equals Negro or Nero, black or more equals Moro, Negro, Mora, more, Negro equals Negro, Moro, Ethiopia, French, Nur equals black, Negro equals Negris, um, more. German more it was more black and more black it was Swartz um, Swartz N Niger Polish black it was Mizzing or Muzin black and more and Kazoni um, Dutch black it was Swart Dunker Niger Nigerian black and more it was more Turkish black it was Kara Murak Muk, Murak Muk face. Um, new, um, new, um, Norwegian, black equals, uh, severity. More equals more. Portuguese Negro equals black or more. Africano Negro equals black equals preto. Latin black equals. Niger, Nautics, Narizio. It was an English custom to give baptized black surnames with variations of the root more or black. The name simply established for a time or the time the black background of the African background of the person's family so named other English variations of these black moors are black mere, black moor, black or mere, black man. Um, blacky, black. In France, more was used for Negro more. In 17th century Puerto Rico, and currently blacks were all called Los Men Marinos or Moors, Moro. So when I said Moreno, and I asked the Mexican 
that we would refer to him as Moreno, and he and this is what he said. Then, as you see here, blacks will call Los Moreno or Moors, the Moors. So Mexicans know that we are the Moors. However, if we go around saying that we African, that we black, Negro, then they looking at us like we stupid. So here, go to Webster Dictionary, Marion Webster Dictionary says 1828, more men, look it up, and what does it say? Mormon is inhabitant of a moor. Mormon, Mormons. Definition of Mormon is India and Sri Lanka. What it says? Muslim. So when we talk about the Mormons, Muslims, they've taken Islam and they are in the state of Utah, which is Washita. And you look and see that Utah is part of the 13 uh, uh, states or more of the Washita. So especially a Muslim of mixed Arab and Indian ancestry. The so-called Indians refer to themselves as Morod also, Moors, as they still have a mountain range in India to this day called Indo Kush, saying that they are Kushites. Definition of Mormon a person living on a moor, an administrative officer who oversees a moorland or the animal grazing on it. We see the names Abraham, Isaac, Abraham, um, Adam, Moses. We see these various relics and artifacts that have been found that are all, all over, all over them, all over North America. The same writings as we see on these relics the Hebrew, the Arabic, the hieroglyphics, the same as we talked about with the Micmac or Nicknack, as they also refer to it as. But I'd rather say Micmac. As you see, this is Smith Anton letter hieroglyphics, nearly identical to the Micmac Indian hieroglyphics. So the Micmac or really the word more because the word mac if you go and do your research j rogers tell you that mac actually is the same as the word mor mac is more so the micmac actually are the moors the moorish indians and their hieroglyphics is identical to the ancient egyptians so that means that the indian moors or moorish indians are the egyptians that are the remnants of the ones who was here that stayed in the Americas that did not leave with Aha or Neymar, who was the first dynastic king in Egypt. And the word Neymar, if you notice, you go back to um you go back to the comic book, King Namor actually was the king of Atlantis. Within the Marvel comic books. And they call King Namor, they refer to him as the Osiris, as he came in the image and after the Osiris of all saw.
Here again, ancient Egypt or Egyptian, the Mi'kmaq language. This is all in, a lot of this is in the book, America BC by Barry, Dr. Professor Barry Fell, F-E-L-L. There's evidence of ancient Egyptians found in Maine. And who were they? As I told you, they were known as the Nicknack, which are the Micmac Indians. Is that a coincidence? Which Dr. McDonald states were the Algonquin or Iroquois race. There also have been Egyptian hieroglyphics found on Long Island. Matter of fact, throughout New York. It was revealed in a magazine called Nexus Magazine, N-E-X-U-S. While the ancient Libyan language of their sellers has been found in Quebec, Canada, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, California, Texas, and New York. All right. I want you to go over that information so that everybody can have a better understanding of who the Washington are. So when you read certain books like this, we are the Washington, the indigenous black inhabitants of North America, the untold story of the ancient ones, the original black mound building inhabitants of North America. Now you realize what the Empress is referring to Verdiasi Tierra, Washington, Tunica, Gaston, El Bay. When she speaks about this, and that the word Washita is ancient Egyptian. So, really, you are the ancient Egyptians because you are the remnants, just like the Nicknack or Micmac tribes are the remnants. The Cherokee are the remnants, as I showed you earlier. You are the remnants. So really, when they talk about these various tribes, actually they are referring to the ancient Egyptians. This is why on the front of my cover, I had the picture of the ancient Egyptians. And people was wondering, well, if you're talking about indigenous aboriginal people in here, then why you got on the cover the Egyptians? And I would not say anything to them because I'm like, read the book. I tell them in the book that, uh, that all these people are ancient Egyptians. Walter, Professor Walter Williams, he's been on my show many times, and he tells everybody that we are the ancient Egyptians. And they don't understand what he's talking about. They think he's a kook. Yet he put out phenomenal books, Historical Origin of Christianity, Historical Origin of Islam. For whatever reason, he won't put out Historical Origin of Judaism. And I know why. Because that's, cause that's, that's a serious pushback. Start messing with the ADL and, you know, all of them and shit. So, why is it that Abraham Lincoln referred to this area as Egypt of the West? Let's see. Did you know that the United States never finished paying for the Louisiana Purchase? Exactly. I revealed this in 2005 when the Katrina disaster hit. And nobody heard that before. For whatever reason, that was not made public. That was not known. Bobby Hemet was mentioning me. Phil Valentine was mentioning me. Everybody was mentioning me because that was something that nobody knew at that time in 2005. 
that the United States never finished paying for the Louisiana Purchase. So therefore, it was never purchased. It's always been the Washington proper, as the Empress have told us. This means that the land was supposed to go back to the hands of the Washington Moors, thus making the late Empress Vidiasi Tierra Washington Gaston Al Bay the heir to the 19, 19, 1795 Spanish land grant of Maison Rouge. The Louisiana Purchase consists of what states? Montana, mm -hmm. North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Minnesota, Nebraska, Colorado, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, uh-oh, let's go to it, Texas, Alabama, and what? Utah, New Mexico, Florida, etc. The Washington was governing more than 3 million acres. It actually goes as high as 30 million acres all the way up into the whole of Canada. In fact, the Canadian government is actually patent and actually um, signed as far as its operation in Washington, D.C., the Empress and or the Washtenaw holds the title to the area west of the Allegheny Ale, um, um, Alapachian Mountains. This land has never been part of the, of the United States of America. It is the same land Abraham Lincoln spoke of returning to Moors after slavery in which he called it Egypt of the West. Now, why would he call that Egypt of the West? What is these states again? Which are the Egypt of the West? Egypt of the West. Or Central America. The land between the Rocky and the Allegheny Mountains from the Gulf of Mexico up into Canada and on both sides of the Mississippi. Is there any proof of this? Yes. In 1848, the Washington Internal Nations took their land case before the United States Supreme Court and won their case under Judge Taney. So, you are the ancient Egyptians. You are the Micmac, Knickknack, give a dog a bone, Moors. You are the Cherokee, the Chickasaw. Muskogee Creek, the Choctaw, Washita. You are all of these and more. In those books that I may mention of America is the True Old World, Volume 1 and 2. Amun Hotep, or Brother Amun, he goes into detail proving that what we refer to as India was right here. In fact, if you get an old map, it says India Superior. India Superior. So when they refer to the people as Indians, then we know what they're referring to. You know what they're referring to. This is why when you go and you read the Empress book, The Return of the Ancient Ones, what does it say? It says that we are the tribe of Shabazz, a Sabut, S B T U, Sabut. We are the Sabut or the tribe of Shabazz, which is the same tribe, which is the word Shabut, is Washabut, which is Washita. Yes, somebody saying something? Brother North Star. Yes, Brother North Star. Yes. Question. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It'll, go ahead. Continue. I'll, uh, All right. I'll, I'll come back with you. All right. So when you read, matter of fact, what I can do is pull it up and you can see for yourself. In the Return of the Ancient Ones, the Empress speaks of we being the tribe of Shabazz or Sabut, which would be Washabut, when Washabut becomes Washita. And so I will show you, let's go to it, Return of the Ancient. Yes. Can you get a moment? Okay. All right. Um, so Christopher Columbus 
may not have been lost if he was looking for the West Indies. No, he wasn't. He wasn't lost. He was privy. He was privy to that. He had inside information. Map. Right. He had inside right. information coming from the various maps in which that was found still in Spain and Portugal um, libraries, which was of the Moors. And their, um, and their trade routes that they've been doing for hundreds and thousands of years of doing import and export back and forth. Right. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, um, this is why the emperors always say that uh, the Washita, which means Washita isn't just here in America, Washita is all over the world. Because <laughs> we as, and I'm sure that you've heard this before, uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad said that, uh, that we are global people. Or as I would say, not to offend um, those who believe in flat earth, we are the worldly people. <laughs> right? And this is why I said on the video that we've been all over the world. And I'm trying to get people to understand that, but we keep coming back to these um, knuckleheads who keep trying to uh, block themselves off from this information that we are the same, you know, that we are the same people. You got various people trying to say, oh, we just Indian. Oh, we ain't Moors. Or you got people who say that we Moors. Oh, no, we ain't Indians. And then you got, I'm like, yo, all of y'all sound basically retarded right now. You know, because if you go and do your research, you find that we all that and more. You know, so um, definitely wanted to get that out for y'all can see and understand. So let me show you this part here. I'm going to, hopefully I can find this here rather quickly, where the Empress speaks about this at in the book, Return of the Ancient Ones. Excellent book. If you don't have this book, please go and get it. If you need a PDF copy of this book, then you can um, write me, and it's $20 at drlemailbay.com, and I'll send you a PDF copy. This is... Yes. I have a quick question. Um, yes. Now, I heard you mention Askenazi in, in, right. in one of the descriptions. Now, when I hear mm -hmm. Askenazi, I think of the German, uh, the, the European Germans. Um, but are, am I wrong? Is that also our, our na one of our nationalities as well? Like, yeah. Well, that, that actually was a Native American name, is Askenazi. All right? So... Uh, whatever name in which they chose for themselves was probably patterned after what we was already referring to ourselves as because, as you know, Europeans have a tendency um, at times of um, taking information and not telling people where they got it from. So, therefore, um, as if it only existed in a vacuum, just like, for example, we, when we look at the, um, the uh, Confederate flag, we think of just racism. Oh, they're waving that racist flag. Oh, my God not realizing that that is the Algonquin flag. That's the flag of the Algonquins. We had that flag first. Okay, and I figured that about mm -hmm. the, um, as far as like my question was concerned, I figured that anyway, but um, is it still the same way? Do you know? No, it's not spoke the same way. No, it's not the same way. Because that's the part I'm going to look up so that way I can also clarify that. Okay. And I might have been reading a little bit too fast. I'm going to go back. Um, but right here, let me see. Hey, hey, Dr. Aileen, it's, it's yeah. Anastasi. It's A N. Anastasi. Thank you, Greg. Anastasi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Because that's what I say. Hold on. Maybe I was pronouncing it wrong, but Ananazi. Yes. Oh, Anu. Anu. Like A N U? Right. But Ani. Okay. But, right, I, but yes, but Anu, really. Yeah, but Ani. Mm hmm. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. Um, spell it for the goddess one more time, please. Yes, it's A N A. 
S A Z I. Anazazi. Anazazi, right? Anazazi. Thank you. All right. Um, let me see here. Uh, Taking me a little bit of time to find this passage, whatever reason. Just bear with me, y'all, because I do want to make that connection so that we can um, clarify some things. Uh, shed some light on the uh, waterways that was running through the uh, the rivers that ran through the oceans and how they knew how to navigate that. Yes, go go ahead, Brother Nosa. <laughs> I, I wanted to know where, uh, if your mind had come across that, if your brilliant uh, investigative mind had come across the waterways, the riverways in the ocean. Uh, right. Where, Mm hmm. What what I've been able to establish is the fact that they, these specific currents was able to bring um, those across from what we now refer to as the Americas, you know, into Africa and vice versa with natural currents, natural wind right. currents. So you know, that's 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 what I've been. Um, um, able to research and study so far, but as far as the technicalities, I don't yeah. know the technicalities, but that is, um, from what I've studied, is that's how we was able to do certain things. Um, sometimes we didn't even have to have cells, but um, but these currents was able to bring us, um, you know, into these specific um, rivers and waterways, as you have stated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, um, also, I, it's a video I was watching, and I showed it to my children because they were talking about uh, the Moors and the Mons and uh, how the Moor, you know, came from the word Mon um, over mm -hmm. in the East, uh, in East uh, Asia, uh, referring to the monsoon because uh, it would sail. They would sail to the east and uh, in the winter time or in the fall into into the and back. You know, I guess east and west or whatever. Like it was right. a, it was a, it was a river current or ocean right. current. The ocean current, exactly, exactly. Same information, then. So, yep, exactly. And Dr. Ali. Yes. Uh, I was, I was watching um, or reading this information about Columbus, Christopher Columbus, him being a Moor, a Viking, a Dutch. Yes. Yes, that was shown actually. Um, I showed the picture of him. Um, um, Chief Arishis, or Shekhar Mauritius, um actually um, had a picture for us. He um, sent it to me. I had it before, but somehow I lost it, and he sent it, resent it to me. And um, um, it shows that this was on uh, the TV show, uh, what's the name? It's dealing with aliens on the History Channel. What's the name of the um, alien show? I can't remember right now offhand, but. Um, what was the name of that show? X-Files? No, not X-Files. It was an alien show. The new show that's out now with all of them talking about everything was alien. The pyramids were built by the aliens. Oh, Stonehenge was built by aliens. Oh, you know, everything is alien. Oh, uh, gosh, what's the name of that? Uh, uh, it's on the History Channel, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me see. Alien TV show the name of that joint. Uh, I know we all watched it too. Yeah, we all watched it. We've all seen it. We watched, we watched it. Yeah. yeah if, if we haven't seen it, we 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 heard about it. All right. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's nothing on Gaia, but this is an actual show that they had on A and E History Channel. Uh, let me see. I think the name of it is uh, Ancient Aliens. That's it, Ancient Aliens. There we go. <laughs> All right, right, right. Ancient, I, I, thank you. I, That's it. I saw so many of those programs. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I'm about to say, hold up. Now I know everybody done seen this this stuff here. But yes, that's it. Yes, that is it. Yeah. Yeah, 
ancient aliens, yes. Yeah, they talk a lot of Siskin. <laughs> right. Everything is alien. <laughs> but they forget to say, say that we are the, we are the aliens. That it came from <laughs> us. All right, so <laughs> that's the only thing they forget. All right, so I'm going to show yeah. this. All right. All right. Uh, let me see. Okay. All right. Everybody can see this? Yeah. 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 All right. So right here, Anna is Hebrew for the Egyptian An, or Anu, which is On also is called Heliopolis, which is the city of the sun. On is also called the city of the sun. This sign is none other than the planet Sirius. Sirius is Greek. It means great sign. And Nu equals the Nigur. The Nigur. In the original form, and it stands for divine Negroes or those who came down to earth from heaven. So therefore, there go your aliens. The Sirius star system is connected to the planet X which is coming towards Earth, which is already here, which is called India, which is Sirius C. Louisiana equals the great dark warriors in the city of Tamori, which comes from heaven or planet X. Also, the history, here it is, also the history of the Washita, Washet. People and land are connected with the word Washita or Wishita. Or any serious student of history can easily see the connection between Wichita conception is the early 1800s and the Washita demise. Um, in closing, okay, this doesn't have everything I wanted, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still find it. In closing, I will add that it is expedient for as many people as possible to investigate and join the struggle to assist in restoring the great Moorish African people and land back to the Aboriginal Negro owners in the name of justice and fulfillment. All right? So... I'll just read that. Let's go back. Boom. All right. Let me look one more time. I got to find it. All right. But I, since we were talking about it, I wanted to go there. All right. Uh, here it is. Let me close it up a little bit. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right, uh, about got it. Almost got it, y'all. Here it comes. All right, here we go. Here we go. All right, so here it is. Okay, so, no, oh, come on. All right, so here we go. Let's look at it. Okay, can everybody see this? Yes, yes, sir. So, Washata, Wa, they, them, ships, boat, only one single, fresh and blood heirs, governors, rulers, equals lake, water, garden, 
read land, conquer it once, to separate section of those who built places of a good dynasty or destiny, excuse me, and then ta land, guys of the of the cycles of cir or circle, Morris, Moro, Morris, Berry or Mulberry, cross. The X equals emblem of the coming ones, equals the X men. All right, and I spoke about this um, last year when we was ha when they when um, Beetle Geese or Beetle Juice was um, exploding. Land of the Reeds, Reed Land is called uh, Etrians. Pardon, pardon me. Huh? Pardon me, bro. Uh, before you go down, uh, go back up and uh, just uh, uh, conquered ones. Right. Shed some light on that for me. Um, meaning that our land has been conquered by upsurders, upsurders as well as um, by those in which that have come in as immigrants, as pilgrims, okay. as, uh, you know, right now we are the conquered ones. Um, yes, okay. yeah. I wanted to make sure that that was uh, an, acknowledge, an acknowledgement. I wasn't sure what that was. But. Right, 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 right. So see today by many geographers, but in antiquity it is known as Kamor, or Kamor, another lake of the gods, or terrestrial waters of those who came down from heaven. As above, so below is an old axiom of Kemet. Washet or Washito, all right, equals west or western land of the reed. Also, those who came in ships that was rebuilt at the end times, new cycles, who are the flesh and blood heirs of the heavenly ones, X-Men, Marduk, and who governed even though they were conquered. So right here, and will govern even though they were conquered. So that is us. Keep in mind that this Moorish word is a descriptive term that has within it several sentences. Then you have sebet, all right, or septi. All right, this is the word that I was telling you about. Here it is. Septi is another name for washiti, washita. In Kemetan, they became the Hebrew word sept, septis, or to sit, right? Now, that also becomes the word Shabazz, all right? That becomes the word Shabazz. In Kem, Egyptian, Shabbat means those who will rule and the pupil and teachers from the star system Sirius. Softest equals Set Isis. The Hebrew, a Canaanite Phoenician, Moorish word, is not to be confused with Yiddish that is being spoken today as Hebrew that was officially made up in the 1990s. The Hebrew word sept can also be written as septa or septi or septet. This is because these three letters, ta, te, and set, Interchange frequently and most likely stem from the same original Phoenician Moorish letter X. T. All right? Septa. To cease. Day of rest. Time of peace. End of a cycle. And the beginning of another one. All right? Continue on here. Septa. To set up a government or Egyptian family and a rod of God. Septid, a time of confusion or mingling together in moderate Arabic, this becomes Sheik, the old ones and kings. It also is one of the names for Israel, Israelite Hebrews. For the Israelite Hebrews. All right, well, who is they? When we use the three radical root Septid, it becomes Shabbat. Or Shabazz, Shabazz of the Nation of Islam. It is also possible to write Shabbat as Sept or Shabazz in Kem alphabets. The B and the P interchangeable. There is one other form of the word Washington I will bring to your attention. It is used as the T, T, S, S, sh, or Sh 
in the old languages. Languages. With this in mind, we get washe equals washicha equals washita. It means the capital city of Aphrodite or Aphrodites or ladies of love. The T H or T in Washeta or Ch is one letter and becomes She or She. All right. So it shows you, right, that Washita is the tribe of Shabazz. Now, when you go and read right here. We go to the tribe of Shabazz, even on Wikipedia, it says, according to the nation of Islam, the tribe of Shabazz was the only survivors of the 13 tribes that lived on earth 66 trillion years ago. So the Washington is the tribe of Shabazz. We were the only remaining or surviving tribe that lived on the planet earth 66 trillion years ago. After a rogue scientist blew up the planet, splitting off the moon, the other tribes perished. The tribe of Shabazz relocated to the rich Nile Valley of Egypt, in the present seat of the holy city Mecca, Arabia. It was technologically advanced civilization or society, excuse me, by one fraction was led by Shabazz himself into previous unoccupied areas of Central Africa because he wanted them to be hardened. There they evolved Negro features. Malcolm X in the 1962 speech, he speaks on this, he stated, he wanted the people to undergo a form of life that would make them tough and hard. And the other scientists wouldn't agree with him. So this scientist named Shabazz took his family and wandered down into the jungles of Africa. Prior to that time, no one lived in the jungles. Our people were soft. They were black, but they were soft and delicate, fine. They had straight hair right here on this earth. You find some of them look like this today, right? This is the Indian Superior. This is why when you see the map of Indian Superior, that's in America. They are black as night, but their hair is like silk. And originally, all our people had this kind of hair. But this scientist took his family down into the jungles of Africa and, and living in the open, living in the jungle life, eating all kinds of food, had an effect on the appearance of our people. Originally, living in the rough climate, our hair became stiff like it is now. All right, so this is what is told to us by Elijah Muhammad, all right, about the tribe of Shabazz. And I guess this would actually uh, uh, make some sense on why, you know, uh, our people have an affinity for straight hair. All right. Um, and while you see um, even dark skinned so-called Indians with the straight hair, um, we know that they use buffalo grease. We know that they use bear grease in order to make their hair real wavy and straight. Right. We used it. Shit, I was using it. I had my sport, my waves. So we used Dex hair grease, Murray hair grease. I remember and, Murray. Yes, and, 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 brush, and brush like crazy to get them. Uh, my ways to make you seasick. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I, yeah, I use to make them seasick. That's right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, brother. <laughs> use to make them seasick. Exactly. So that was the key. All right. So that's what that's what this is talking about here. That's how the hair was. All right. Seven ether. Then it became eight ether. Then it became nine ether. We never really had six ether here, all right, um, in this aspect. But it was much finer than it is now, all right? So, um, um, are there any questions concerning anything that we've gone over? Hopefully this connected some dots for you for those in which that have been doing your own research. Um, the um, just a comment on uh, mm -hmm. a couple of places I've been, a couple of places I've been on the planet. Um, they 
when I spoke to them, they would declare themselves as star-seeded people, always having been originated in that particularly locale landmass of the earth. Um, right. I knew people up north. I knew people I came across and uh, the Uchi Nanshu people um, in um, Okinawa. And, um, and I was hosted by a lady there that was, it took me to a small island and she's explained to me that they, they have always been there. You know, there's a few places on the planet where they think like that animated people. Uh, uh, people who uh, follow animism, they they feel that they were already star seeded. Um, right. So um, that that came to my mind, you know, as we are saying that we are star seeded, uh, coming right. from out of serious and stuff. Uh, right. Uh, well, well, what we do know, uh, they they might have been in those areas, but the original star seed are uh, only um, black people, and everybody else came from us. So. <laughs> that's 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 what we do know um, sure, about sure, this right. about this scenario. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and, this, and this is proven within uh, paleontology, archaeology, anthropology, biology. You know, every ology that you can go into, any study of anything, always points back to us as being the oldest people on planet Earth and off-world connections. But yet, you know, everyone has come in because we don't want to deal with that type of thing any longer. And everyone come in and co-op our stories. And, um, you know, and, you know, we get the, you know, the end part. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Um, I was going to say Easter Island uh, is another one. Those, um, those are, they do the same thing as well. Uh, right. But, uh, yeah, the, you know, uh, the, the Twa, you know, the Twa <laughs> birthed it all. We know that, yeah. Right, right, exactly. Thank you. Exactly. All right, are there any other questions before we go? All right, if there's no more questions, I'm going to say AIT Washington East, everyone. AIT Washington. AIT Washington East. AIT Washington East. Yeah, I tell you what's to each.